Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number six of this NHL 22 Detroit Red Wings Fantasy Draft Franchise Mode in Motor City on my channel. If you guys have missed episodes up to this point, head up into the top corner. If you missed the last one, go down below. And if you do enjoy this one, make sure to show your support by dropping a like, subscribing, and hitting notifications to never miss when I upload and let's get to it. So last episode, we assembled the roster for this upcoming season. For the most part, I'm not entirely set on this group yet. We have Connor Bedard right now, but I'm honestly thinking at just 81 overall, it might be better to play him further down in the lineup. But the only issue with that is he doesn't fit very well. So I've tried to move things around to make this fit better. I've tried pretty much every single line combo. And I just don't think we're going to get it, unfortunately. But even with that, if we do scratch Bedard, we still have guys like Kubalik and Hornquist who could very easily play further up in this lineup. So that might actually be the move. I think we are going to send Bedard down just for now, which, you know, sounds funny considering he's, you know, a number one overall pick. He's supposed to be this ridiculously good player. I'm just worried about his development, plus I would love for him to win the Calder, but I think scratching him will send him down, and like scratching him will, it sends him back to the CHL, we're good to go there, and then along with that, it lets us develop some of our other players a little bit better, which again, I'm totally for with this team, reason being is I think we can still put together a pretty darn sweet lineup here. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to play a guy like, I think Jacob Pro actually. We're going to play a guy like Jacob Pro at center. We'll put a guy like Hornquist further down in the lineup. Maybe, maybe not. Um, let's see if a guy like Kubalik is a better fit. And that he is not. Okay. Um, come on, we got to get some kind of line combo here. Um... Not exactly what I was thinking. Maybe Hornquist works better. Holtz. Uh, or Gunther. We are rolling four lines, so. But then again, Gunther should probably be. I can, I can run a plus zero or a zero chemistry on the bottom. That's okay. Also, I did add those X-Factors to Goligoski, and it's looking a lot better. So with that... Uh, we are indeed going to have to put in somebody else here. I think it's going to be... I mean, it should be like Quinton Byfield, but I think it's actually going to be Hornquist, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's the only guy that fits here. So let's do that nice and quick. Yeah, okay, that's it's good enough. It's not fantastic, but it's okay. And along with that, maybe we run like a Byfield and Holtz. That's not great. Byfield Pro, also not great. All right, what else do we got here? Byfield Spezza. Does nothing work here? My god, okay. Um, this is a little bit extreme as far as how useless this line chemistry is. My goodness, all right. Sure, let's go with Ken Johnson. Okay, so that's all fixed, that's ready to go. Our team's ready, I honestly don't know how we're gonna do. I wouldn't actually mind if we end up in the lottery because there are players like Aaron Kiviaru and Orlando Binaural that we know are going to be franchise players eventually. So honestly, if we added a franchise defenseman like Kiviaru, don't get me wrong, Kiviaru should go number one. He's a ridiculous offensive defenseman, but if those two switch, we could very easily make a push for the number two pick. So Let's get into the season, see how this team does. Obviously, our Grand Rapid team is going to be pretty stacked, and I expect a guy like Michael Rasmussen to really put up a, an astounding year in the minors and really help you know boost some guys' games like Eric Hoffman and such. But we'll see what happens. I mean, that Coronado Bork border low line should put up crazy good numbers too. But again, it's, it's hard to tell how a season's going to go. So let's see how this one goes, and I'll be back with you guys at the end of the 2023-24 season here. We finished with a 50-29-3 record, putting up 
103 points and a fourth place might be yeah should be fourth place most likely unless for some reason the sabers win another or don't win another game and they don't okay so we do actually finish third place in our division lucas raymond scores 76 points it's not a bad year at all from detroit and we are already getting into playoff push mode i didn't think we were going to be here this quickly but that's good to see so remember we need 14 stanley cups we are in season three of this franchise mode so not too far in by any means but with that being said an early stanley cup would not hurt finishing fifth place in the league means that you are in the run for a cup or in the running for a cup so really good season here kent johnson just goes off puts up 71 points uh veneers with 67 byfield up to a 87 with 57 points um the second line doesn't do so well this year shane wright 50 points not the same as 60 last year and oh alexander holt's not a good year unfortunately there so some down years for certain players up years for others like look at that edmondson's up to an 88 like this team could very easily win the cup this year flurry wins 33 17 for primo not bad at all and uh our rookies are gunther perot and clark you know what 53 for gunther might very potentially might be league leading so let's see 53 no joachim kamel goes off for the rangers um marco roski scores 57 gunther finishes fourth so not bad how about Thomas Mikola there? Oh my goodness, that is quite a player there too. 50 points, but he's 87 rated. Um, yeah, that's that's just good looking players throughout here. How about uh, Cody Boro? Okay, he's up to, an, yeah, for a 20th overall pick at 82 and 19 is really nice. For the entire league, Flurry isn't even in the top 10, but Blackwood, Samsonov are right in that 40 win kind of mark. Campbell was really good for the Devils too. Oh my God, he's is he ever good? 89 rated, might be the highest rated goalie in the league at this point. Actually, oh no, Spencer Knight makes sense in Washington. He looks like a gorgeous goalie. Same with Jake Ottinger, and we're expecting. I'm hoping, anyways, we're going to see um, Sebastian Costa get into that company real soon too. Carter Hart's 90 rated. My goodness, how about defensive ratings there? Evan Bouchard this year gonna top out a lot of guys so i wonder where kale mccarr's ended up because usually he scores a lot more so maybe he got injured this year or who knows who knows what happened with kale but evan bouchard is the defenseman of the league right now yeah okay interesting defensive numbers there um as far as forwards go alexander ovechkin 59 points he's still 96 rated at 38 years old are you kidding me my goodness ovechkin that's insane like he is just absolutely skyrocketed points wise as he's gotten older how does that make sense oh my god mcdavid's 99 overall at 27 well that would have just been unfair mcdavid and dry and edmonton hey that that wouldn't have been fair for the rest of the league but trevor zegris looks real nice in pittsburgh too Kyle Connor in Toronto. I bet you Toronto fans would like that, but you know, I'm, I'm sure they don't like seeing Matthews in Dallas. So yeah, um, man, these are some interesting numbers. Uh, Mackie Samuskevich, did I call that or did I call that? My goodness, he, 82 points. That's pretty impressive. Um, in Philadelphia, no less. Yeah, Samuskevich had a year. Um, better than most of our guys. Look at McKinnon, not even a point per game in Arizona, but Arizona's probably terrible too. So yeah, Lucas Raymond actually scores less than the top rookie Joachim Kamel this year. That's a little sad, but it is what it is, and we made the playoffs, so I could care less. <laughs> um, So guys, I didn't really take a look at the Grand Rapid Griffins for a second, and they put up a 127-point season yet again finishing first in the AHL so I'm really expecting a Calder Cup this year and who knows maybe we get a Stanley Cup too but Dustin Brown scored 91 points as a 39 year old in the AHL like that's insane 
But along with that, he still had 44 penalty minutes. Matthew Nyes was also sick. Like, look at, look at this team. This is just an absolutely fabulous team here in the minors. Coronado was good. Aston Reese, like that. This team is looking really good. I am surprised, but also just happy with the progress down here. So, how about the goaltending? Casa wins 47. He's up to an 82 rated backup. Let's go. Okay, so Casa will be in the NHL next year. I have no doubt in my mind about that. And yeah, this team had a season. All right, guys. So as we head into the playoffs, we are again going to be playing completely like full sim apart from elimination games. So whether we're going to be eliminated or whether we are pushing the other team to elimination, we are then allowed to jump in. But we'll take on the Florida Panthers, and we do not have home ice advantage. And also, I think one other thing I missed with showing you guys was that I did name Moritz Sider captain. I don't know if that's necessarily the right decision, but him and Raymond have been so close where I'm like, Sider plays more minutes, he has the bigger frame, he's more physical, but he doesn't put up as many points as Raymond. That's where the clash was coming in as far as, you know, not really seeing, or not really coming to a decision on that uh, question. But looking at um, the rest of the team here, as far as like we sent Vidard down to the minors for a year or to the to junior. So um, Shane Wright's grown tremendously. Same with Matthew Beneers. We still have guys like Byfield and Kadri in the team that are really good centers too. But Bedard doesn't make a jump. He puts up what right now is 82 points he's very much on pace for a similar season to i mean if he's got 14 games left he's on pace for over 100 again but it looks like regina isn't really playing that well either so that doesn't help but we have other guys here that have grown tremendously to be completely honest like i don't have any other words for it um and we should be seeing a couple more of these guys make the league here so that's where we're at with the team heading into the playoffs. I don't know how well it's going to go, but let's just check out this Florida team that we're taking on because they could be really good. They could be really bad. This is Ovi's team. So they got passers. That's the thing is Cousins can pass, Mercer can pass and shoot. They've got a team on their hands. Like they are forward wise, they are extremely good. Defensively, they're even better. They've got just an absolutely towering defensive core. And they got Carey Price and Ugo Pekalukanen in net. We're going to have a tough go with this. So to be completely honest, I wouldn't be surprised if we're knocked out in round one, but we'll see what happens here. All right, so let's get into this. Um, the minors I'm not worried about. I think our team should very likely go through um, and beat Manitoba, but who knows? They, they might have a round one upset too. So let's see what happens here. So... Let's get into it. Game one against Florida, we win 4-1. Big performance from Lucas Raymond. Game two, we win 5-2. All right, we're taking it to the Florida Panthers here on away ice. And we go one and one off the start. Matthew Nye's two goals. We might sweep the Panthers. We genuinely might just sweep the Panthers. And our team is down 2-1 in Grand Rapid. Okay, that's not great. So our AHL team could be out right there. We'll see. But, and yeah. They're out, getting eliminated from the playoffs. They're out in round one. How is the top team, 127 point Grand Rapid Griffins, out in round one after winning the call, uh, the like top team in the league? I don't even remember what it's called. But first period of game four, one one game. Second period, three two Florida lead. All right, heading into the third. Can we eliminate them? I can jump in here. I don't know if I want to power play Florida doesn't convert i have faith in our team despite the fact that we're giving up tons of power play minutes here we just need one power play to balance this out and we'll probably get a goal so down to the final minutes here i don't think we're going to get them in four and no we don't lucas johansson nets and empty same with kisikov but whatever you know we don't finish it on home ice but that's okay it gives the florida panthers a little bit of life but really just an upsetting 3-1 loss there in the um in the minors so 1-1 one, one, game five off the start second period 2-2 two, two. all right if they get a go-ahead goal here they do not Nazem Kadri coming up clutch in the playoffs here that's why we brought him in let's go all right 
up 3-2. Power play doesn't go. We give Florida a chance to tie it here. And looks like Flurry shutting the door so far. So make it 4-2. Let's go. Matthew Boldy puts the nail in the coffin. We knock Florida out in five games. So nice start to this uh, playoffs. Kent Johnson with eight points in just five games. That's what we like to see. And now that I'm thinking about it, we haven't signed any extensions for anybody. So this is going to be interesting because we've got big names coming up that are going to cost us a lot of money, such as Lucas Raymond. Actually, you know what? With $60 million on the... Um, <laughs> we're going to sign this whole freaking team up. There is no doubt in my mind that we can get just about everybody signed to an extension here. It's more so just a matter of like how much are we really going to pay. It's going to be interesting to see how is Connor Bedard doing here. Eh, he's already matched his two season ago total, but he's just not growing the way I was expecting him to. It's just strange. So anyways, I'm going to try tossing rule of 85 into this as well, um, which is really going to give us cheaper contracts. So uh, starting off with an $8.7 million contract, $7.4 million for Lucas Raymond until he's 27 is a pretty gosh darn good deal. So we'll take that. Um, 8.575, we're looking at 7.3 for Cider. Again, crazy good contracts. If we can lock these guys up for those cheapest amounts of money, then we'll take it. 7.025. We're looking at about a $6 million contract for Beniers for six years. That's insane again. So we'll do that as well. Um, now keep in mind Johnson, actually Johnson's locked up, but keep in mind Holtz, Gunther, and Wright are still going to need contracts eventually too. Sanheim doesn't really count uh, based on his money amount there, but Boldy for 5.1 translates to a $4.34 million contract roughly. So we'll go with 4.35. Uh, Travis Sanheim has been good, don't get me wrong, but 4.775 for until he's 34. We could probably sign him for about 4.075 instead. So let's do that. I don't know if we're going to sign Spezza and Hornquist yet. We'll keep an eye on them, but Subban and Goligoski should be on their way out too. Primo, I think, is going to be our starter next year, to be completely honest with you. Flurry at... Oh, maybe not. I don't know. Primo is really cheap. If we try to sign him up for two or three years, he's going to be a little bit more, but, like, not much more. I, I'll honestly sign him right there for that. And Flurry, we could trade Flurry, we can move him, we can do things with an 85-rated goalie still. So, we'll see what happens. I mean... Casa we don't have to sign, which is awesome. Um, Christian Whiting's coming up just at the right time here to really develop. And I think we're actually set with this team. So now that that's over, we beat Florida 4-1. to one, And let's see um, who we're moving on to face here in the next round of the playoffs. So it should be Washington. Oh, it might be Montreal. But we get Fleury, Primo. Raymond, Cider, mm, Beneers, oh, okay, so we do get Beneers, Boldy, Sanheim, we got everybody, that's perfect. Things are going well, so we actually take on the Toronto Maple Leafs in the next round of the playoffs. How badly, did they really beat the Montreal Canadiens, or was it kind of like a close series? It wasn't a close series, they beat them 4-1. So as we head into the second round of the playoffs, obviously, again, it's an upset in the minors, but it's also an upset in the NHL. So let's see how round two against the Toronto Maple Leafs go. Let's just check out their team again, see who's in Toronto, because this uh, fantasy draft has thrown me in a loop. I mean, yeah, Kyle Connor's a pretty darn good player. They got a nice lineup there. 20-year-old Sillinger looks absolutely fan fantastic, phenomenal, whatever you want to say. Um, Turcotte's good there too. He could be a center for the future. Um, and they got a good, good defense here as well. Don't get me wrong. I think our goaltending is a little bit better, um, than Pedersen and Hill, just with Flurry and 
primo, but, you know, looking at this team, our defense is loaded. Our forwards are really good. I'm genuinely thinking we run Alex Holtz down a line just to give him a better chance to perform potentially, but I really, really like how this lineup's looking already. You know, if Johnson has to play, actually Johnson can totally stick where he is. Maybe it's Raymond down. Ooh, ooh, there's a move for you. Hey, run a three and a five. Ooh, Holtz shouldn't work that well on the bottom line, but you know what? It works. It works for what we're looking for. I think we're going to keep seeing some great scoring out of this team, and I think they could easily push further into the playoffs here. So let's take on the Maple Leafs, the favorited Maple Leafs, and game one is a 5-2 to two loss. We're handed our first real tough loss here. And game two, we win, bounce back, 2-1. to one. Raymond's leading our team, 9.7 games. So game number three, we lose 4-3. Toronto's coming at us hard, and they're winning games. So this is a tough series battle between the Giants here, really, because, you know, Montreal's out of the playoffs. Toronto and Detroit have the two most cups remaining. And into game number four, we need a win here, and we don't get it. We lose 3-1. to one. All right, that one is a rough one, but we will shuffle these lines back together, try to get everything kind of sorted out chemistry-wise here, because we need a win. We really, really need a win, and... Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to have an easier time or an easy time getting it. So with that in mind, Flurry hasn't been all that phenomenal, but then again, Primo has been terrible. So we're going to stick with our starter here in Marc-Andre Flurry, and let's get to it. Game number five, we could very easily be eliminated here. And first period down to nothing. Not a great start. Kyle Connor scores twice on the power play. Second period, three to two game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. All right, let's jump in, see if we can salvage something here. And we are playing on Superstar, so let's see how it goes. All right, let's see what we can do here, but really, Toronto's got the upper hand. We've just got to play better, so. All right, here comes Beneers, Matthew Beneers, looking for a play. In deep, Sider's going to get caught out of position here, but Kent Johnson really makes a good play there. Johnson walking in, firing, rebound, Beneers is right there. All right, now Raymond looking for a pass. Can't get it through Chitrin. Johnson was wide open there. All right. Sillinger knocked off his feet. Pelich bumped off the puck here. All right, here we go. Alexander Holtz coming down the wing. Makes a pass over to Gunther. Gunther misses it, though. Pacioretty bumped but knocked off the puck. Now Vander Kane poked away. Matthew Beneers, good poke. That was a great play. All right. Gunther walking in. Dylan Gunther can't quite slide that one in, but it was a good chance there. All right, and they're going to play the dump. We're going to get Cider in here. He's going to get on the move. Here comes Mo. Big old Moritz Cider walking in. Fires, good save, Pedersen. He couldn't quite snipe it. So yeah, we know how good a player Cider is. He just doesn't quite get it done all the time. So, all right. Face off here for Shane Wright. He's going to lose it to Netches, which makes sense. But we're also sitting way back, considering we're losing here. All right, good poke there to slow the attack. Sandheim's pass misses, puts everybody offside. Gunther almost poked that one. That was a good try. Neches knocked off the puck. Kane also defended well. All right. Sanderson going to get on the move here. Hits Byfield. He couldn't quite hold on to it. All right. Sanheim, big hit there. Jesper Bratt defended well. That was a terrible pass. Spez is going to have to close his guy off. Oh, my goodness. This team is just passing so well. Oh, there we go. That's the hit we needed. 
All right, Quinton Byfield cutting across, tries to play it right out in front. It's loose. You know, our team is not quite clicking here, unfortunately. We need to get some better shots, better chances, and opportunities, and it's just, it's tough. It's really tough on Superstar, so. Jacob Pro on the faceoff here. He's going to win it back. Sanderson just loses it straight up to Pearson. Pearson shoved off the puck. Beautiful recovery by Sanderson there. But he can do things like that. Now Jacob Perot cutting in. Bumped off the puck. Loses it somehow. Okay, come on, Perot. Stay with your guy. Oh, right out in front of the net. How is that not a sketchier play? Oh, come on already. All right, Perot giving up. Oh, good chance. Boldy right in front. Matthew Boldy almost tucked that one away, but just couldn't quite find it. All right, we'll get our big guns back out here. All righty. First line's out. We need something here going, and Beniers is going to lose it, but Raymond picks it up and then immediately loses it. Makes sense. All right, Pearson absolutely clobbered there. All right. Nice play up to Raymond. Oh, he glitches past them. Lucas Raymond cutting in. Pass back, doesn't quite go. Raymond's pass also, oh, Claude Henry got laid out there. Oh, beautiful defense from Sider there. That's what we like to see. All right, here comes Raymond down the wall. Lucas Raymond stops up, cuts into the middle, Quite couldn't quite get the play there. Hurry it up, Johnson, my God. Oh, there we go. That's a fight. Get off of him, Paula. What is that? What is that utter garbage? Like, that's such a bad hit. Just just sit down, Paula. Like, what are you doing? What is that kind of hit? Like, you, seriously, your team's up in the game and you're going to throw a hit like that? It's just disrespectful. Like, you, you're you asking to lose the series when you play like that. So, let's see if we can beat them. All right, face off here. Beniers is going to win it. Pass up to Raymond. Lucas Raymond cuts in, fires the puck 10 feet wide of the net. Now Beniers walks in. Oh, what a goal. Matty Beniers fakes it like he's going around the net and then cuts right in front of it. That's what we like to see. That's a fabulous goal. It's the fact that we've got a guy like Beniers just able to do things like that with the puck. Just in so tight, avoids Pedersen with the puck, and it's past him. So there you go. 3-3 three, three game. Just like that, the momentum shifts. And now we got to try to push for the lead. Beniers coming in again. Bumped off the puck a little bit. Toronto moving well. Oh, that was a big hit on Kyle Connor. It's a pretty clean hit, though. All right, Johnson trying to cut through. Beneers off the crossbar. Oh, my goodness. How is that one not in? Sanderson, yet again, makes a real smart, solid defensive play. All right, Alexander Holtz. Oh, Beneers is he's gone. Matty Beneers cuts in. He got hooked on that play. There's no call. All right, Veneers looking for a play. Cycling back, uses his ankle breaker. Oh, good try. Not going to lie, Veneers is so fun to play with as a prospect and as a player. Like his, his ankle breaker where he just beats guys with deeks is so fun. All right, second line's out. Right, Holtz and Gunther. Should be a, a good chance here to score. And yet again, Shane Wright loses the pucks, and now we're chasing. All right, good play defensively on Evander Kane. All right, Shane right down the wall. Cuts right in front. Gunther couldn't fire that one immediately. All right, decent defense. Gunther's fast. Oh, Dylan Gunther walks right in. Oh, great chance. Now he's looking for a play. He got bumped. Lost it, unfortunately. Sanheim. Good defense against Nietzsche. And then Spezza gave it away. Oh, right in front, yeah. 
Martin Nietzsche's with two minutes and 50 seconds left is going to make this a 4-3 game. Toronto's just better, and they might be adding another cup to their resume. So, not great, but we got to bounce back here. So, I thought for sure, like, we were, we had the momentum. Not only did we have the momentum, we had the chances, too. All right, Byfield drive into the net. Oh, come on, Quinton, you got to bury that thing. All right, good defense here. Spezza across, cider through traffic. Oh, it just missed the net. All right, Byfield moving around, getting bumped. Quinton Byfield, oh, could not make the final move. There's some real hard hits, all right. Oh, delayed penalty too, all right. Cider gonna kick this one deep. Edvinson looking right out front. Can't find it, all right. Raymond through traffic. Oh, Hornquist, nice bounce there. Okay, so we get 40 seconds of power play time. We're gonna add an empty net. It's gonna be six on four. Okay, let's get one here. We have to. Like, we literally don't have another option. We lose this series if we don't win right or score right now. So, all right. Shane Wright wins the draw. All right. Perot through traffic. Oh, Boldy just missed that. All right. Boldy getting bumped. Hornquist looking to fire through traffic. Can't do it. And they're going to get the clearance. All right. That's rough. All right, here comes Wright, Shane Wright, cutting in, good chance. Raymond to Boldy, it's a great chance again, Henrique. He's gonna dump it down the ice with seven seconds left. I don't think we're really getting back up ice here enough to, yeah, to do this. I missed the pass anyways. There you have it, whoa, that's loud, ouch, but yeah. Toronto moves on, I mean, I hope hope whoever gets them next in the matchup can beat them but ouch <laughs> all right so we will sim to the draft it hurts that we get eliminated from the playoffs but what do you do when the team's looking like that and there you go Kiviaru moves down to two I think that is a very doable option for a defenseman here that we could pursue, but we'll see what happens. All right, so I think we've got most of our draft picks lined up, but we'll see where exactly our picks land. Arizona fires their coach, and New Jersey wins the cup. Toronto is going to win the Calder there. So let's take a look, just see you know, how those teams' runs went, and if the Toronto, I'm sure the Toronto Maple Leafs were close. Nope, they lost in five. All right, and Chicago was there too, but didn't quite make it as far. So this year for award winners, Ovechkin would win the Art Ross as well as the Hart. Dougie Hamilton would win the Norris. Pasternak would win the Lady Bing. Uh, Kamel would win the Rocket or the Calder. Makes sense. Eichel would win the Conn Smythe. Vanasek would win the Vesna. Samsonov and Dawes would win the Jennings. Uh, Mayfield would win the Masterton. Calgary's coach, Fane, would win the Jack Adams. Ryan O'Reilly would get the Selkie. Alex Ovechkin would also win the Ted Lindsay. And, of course, he would win his fourth Rocket in five years. That's crazy. All right. So as we get to the draft, let's see who wins the Sim, or the Sim, the lottery. And Tampa Bay is going to move from 2-1, to one, and Carolina is going to move from 1-2. to two. That's the only changes. <sighs> So good luck for us trying to trade with one of those teams. I was really hoping a team would win, move up and win the lottery, but we'll see. I would love to get Aaron Kiviaru. I think he would fit our system extremely well. And not only that, but he's just an elite offensive defenseman who's going to be really good for years to come. And I think he could be a really top-end point producer on the back end too if we can get our hands on him. So I need to see what, um, what those teams are asking for and we'll see if we can actually make a move or not. All right, so for retiring players this year, we're going to see some big names such as Joe Thornton, Corey Perry, James Neal, 
Andrew Ladd, even Alex Goligoski. Goligoski was playing for us still. He could have kept playing probably, but goalie-wise, Grace Hutton and Darling, you know, all very good goalies. But uh, yeah, there are your retirees. All right, so Joe Thornton becomes a coach, and we get Alex Goligoski as a scout. Okay, that's going to be fun. So apart from that, we lose Mika Luomala um, as a coach in Grand Rapids. That kind of sucks, but we'll have to replace him. So let's get Alex Goligoski assigned here. Um, he's actually a B-minus rating scout, and we could very likely toss him in the USA East um, to be a... Um, amateur scout. Alright, so I think we're ready to go. Um, I like the players I'm seeing in here for the most part, and we're gonna have to try to reach a deal or agreement or something here to really get the ball rolling on a potential Aaron Kiviaru move. Maybe we potentially even give up a guy like Brant Clark or somebody like that. I wouldn't be surprised though if the asking price is more along the lines of Edmondson Sanderson or um, of course, cider. So I would like to try and keep at least two of those guys. If we can keep all three, that'd be fantastic. Um, and yeah, that would be ideal here. So, all right, let's try to make a move. Um, how about Winquist? Clifford Winquist put up a year there. He's up to a 67. Um, but yeah, we can we can potentially make moves here. Obviously, we're not going to be trying to trade Casa, but Primo or Flurry could be on the move. We've got a 20, it's got to be like 24th overall draft pick or something like that in play as well. So let's see what we can do here. But as we get to it, um, I'm going to try to find a trade, preferably with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Just looking at the draft class, Binaural should go first. And then after that, we'll see. So, uh, Carolina, I got the number two pick. If we could get two and like 67, I would love that. <sighs> Veneers and Clark, Raymond and Clark, Johnson, Boldy, that's a great deal for them. <sighs> Byfield, Whiting, hey? <sighs> Edmonds and Haley, okay. They really like our top players. I would be willing to give up Matthew Boldy, not Kent Johnson though necessarily, but then again, if we could do Byfield, I wouldn't be the end of the world because I have, I mean, the player I would like to trade the most would very likely be Alexander Holtz because then that would give us a top six. I want to run a Raymond Veneers Bedard first line eventually, and then I want to run a right Byfield and Gunther second line. So if that's the case, we'd go Haley. We would try to move Alexander Holtz. We'd probably try to move Matthew Boldy as well because he could be a top six forward otherwise. And is that enough? Maybe we try to get another first off of this team. That could be an interesting move for the future, but maybe we just stick with a second instead. So I think that would be a great deal if we go Daily Holtz and Boldy to Carolina, but I don't know if that's going to go through. Let's just try it. It's also pick 67 this year, so who knows, but let's go for it, see if it happens. And it does not. We're too far off, so oh, I'm, I'm forgetting. We've got pick 26 as well. we got to toss that in here too. So does it go now? Yes, it does. Beautiful. All right, so overall, I really like how that deal went. We're going to get Aaron Kiviaru here, who's like I've literally never had in a franchise mode before. He's a creative player. He's going to be a real talent in real life um, out of TPS eventually in 2024, but um, never played with him before. So this is going to be really interesting having him in Detroit of all markets too. I'm really looking forward to it, and he's going to be a top six defenseman right off the bat, most likely here. So with that in mind, as we jump into round two, we jump way into round two. We're picking late in a lot of these rounds. So good picks here in the second round. Nothing crazy, like Sontag is good, Markstrom's good. Like there, there are good players in here, but 
we're not really going to get a shot at a ton of them either as we get through this draft. So looking at the rest of the first round, Catan to the Jets is going to be nice for them. Jekko to LA, he could carry them far. Uh, Engren at five for Ottawa is a nice pick too. And then after that, it kind of drops off. Not really as many elite talents. I mean, Henrik Nielsen is going to be nice for Montreal. Uh, McCollum goes to the Oilers. He's small, but he's good. And Manchari, Manchari, Mankari goes to New Jersey. So New Jersey still gets an elite goalie out of winning the cup. That's pretty nice. So after that, we're going to go with an elite goalie here at pick 58. I think we have to at this point. And uh, yeah, let, let's go with this just to start. Reese Nash, he is 56 overall. Okay, not bad. And on to pick 61. We got 61 and then 67 to start the next round. So Frolov was a decent defender, but, you know, he's also medium six. So after that, we are going to go and we are going to stick with some picks around the 90s. Um, I'm going to go with Dawson Eves next. And then after that, we're going to go with Sam and Hamelinen. And those will be our next two picks here. So let's go with Dawson Eves. He's 55 overall, two way forward and not a terrible pick. All right, so we take Dawson Eves at the end of the second round here. Um, 55 rated, medium elite, left wing, two way forward, not a bad pick, and could potentially make the NHL in the future. So over to pick 67 now, just a few picks later, we're going to take Hamelinen because he's a guaranteed prospect here. 6-2 uh, defenseman as well, looks really good. And he's 58 rated, so yeah, not bad at all there. All right, so I really like Hamelina as a prospect. Obviously, he doesn't have X factors, but he's still going to be good. So at pick number 122 now, we miss out on Cameron Kelly, who's actually a pretty good-looking defender there from Minnesota as well. Uh, Bolton, as an enforcer, wasn't too bad. He's huge. Yeah, he's like a Tom Wilson-esque kind of player. Um, after Hamelinen, how was the third round? Because we kind of missed out on picks there. Durand was okay. Um, cool was a starter there. Not bad. Um, after that, McGratton. Nice goalie there. Jesus, McGratton. Um, Bessa Curry there as well. Also a very nice defender. Lots of good defensemen in the later rounds, but we're going to go with a guarantee here again. Abraham Garlock. Sounds like Garlic is his name, but Garlock for a fourth rounder. He's 20, but still he's got the potential. He's got a decent overall, and I think he could back it up. So Sunquist, interesting goalie there. 71 rated, but no real potential. Same with Tyrone Law. Those are interesting goalies, but up next, Hoglin goes, Chucko goes. Some decent players get drafted in here, but overall... You know, I'm not really feeling a lot of these. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to have later round picks here for the most part. Like, we might trade our 6th and 7th rounders or something like that. But at 154 here, uh, we'll take Ronald Iserman, I guess. Take an I uh, yeah, Iserman, Iserman, however you want to say it. Um, we'll take him as a low 6. He's not a terrible 5th uh, round pick. And yeah, I guess I'm okay with that, so... After that, we're at pick 186 here, and who are we going with? Yoan Su is pretty decent for Boston. Rask is okay. I mean, these are all low potentials. Oh, I was going to take Showstrom. That was going to be my pick. And instead, he is gone. All right. Well, that kind of sucks. So, who are we going to go with? Um... I think we just say up and screw it. We will trade the other picks here to different teams. Um, I just want to find out who did that pick 26 turn into here because I don't think it's really going to be... Oh, you know what? It might have... No, no, pick 26 was not used very well. well. So keep an eye on that Carolina second rounder next year. That could turn into something for us as well, but... Um, yeah, let's just see what we can get for, uh, like, look at this. Look at this. This looks, oh, the future is so bright. But this, look at this. Like, so many. Everybody's under 23 here on this list. You keep going down, still under 23, still under 23. Sandheim's finally, like, the one older player on this team. That's insane. 
like we are gonna have such a good team for such a long time as long as we can hold them all together but that is really where the secret and the trick in this lies okay wow we got three picks here that we need to just get rid of and no trades found all right let's try to make a trade here who is a player or a piece that we could use potentially we're looking for like a medium a middle six bottom six kind of center maybe not center necessarily but winger two would be good um How good's Tyson Jost? Oh, Jost is an 84. I don't know about that. Um, A Boone Jenner could be decent, but, um, oh, no, he does play left wing too, so. Maybe we go with Boone Jenner. Um, if we can find a trade for him, just to offload some extra pieces here, I wouldn't actually mind. Yeah, let's just pick dump three picks here to go in with Boone Jenner. Okay, let's pick dump three there. And then along with that, we don't have to offer a crazy prospect by any means, but I'm thinking maybe a guy like Sandheim could be a decent let go or Clark as well, because Sandheim is locked up. He's going to be fine. Um, we still need to make room for a guy like Shea Boyum coming up, and he fits the system better than a guy like Brant Clark does. So if we trade Clark... Can we get, can we potentially get a pick back off of Seattle too? Yes, I know they just traded away Ajo and they're probably going to be bad, but if we can get their second, that probably imbalances the deal just a little too much. But if we trade them our third next year, this is a lot of picks and Brent Clark for Boone Jenner in a second. But if it goes through, I will take it. All right, so does that go through? It does not. All right, so maybe we go with our 2025 second then. So not Carolina's, but ours. That should go through now, and it does. Beautiful. All right, so we, we initially just swap seconds, um, trade away a bunch of seventh rounders, and you know essentially move a young prospect defenseman to Seattle in exchange for... Um, you know, a, a future pick that's better than the one we're going to get. And, you know, what, five, six picks there? Six picks? We're looking really good with all those prospects. I like all of them. And Kiviaru is going to be the future back-end leader of this team. So guys, that's where we're going to wrap this one up. Next episode, we will get to the off season. Hopefully the progress reports start to look a little bit more promising, but at the same time, you know, we still got some crazy good players in here. Like, look at this. Quentin Byfield's going to be a freaking franchise player here in no time at all either if he keeps growing at the rate he's been growing. Apart from that, Bedard didn't grow for one reason or another. 94 points did not grow. He must have been on a really terrible Regina team if that was the case. So that's a bit unfortunate, but that's how it goes sometimes. Apart from that, Rekis, Takashi, Helmanen. Oh my goodness, Petri Helmanen came out of left field and stole the spotlight here on our prospect development. That's crazy. Where do we get Helmanen? He was a... Oh man, he must have been way back there. Um... Yeah, 80th overall in 2023. That is phenomenal for a pick. Apart from that, Winquist is looking good. Koss is going to be a backup goalie next year. I can pretty much guarantee that. We'll likely make a trade or a move to get rid of Flurry, most likely. But, you know, Kibiaru is going to be great. 
we've got a ton of prospects in the system here that could play NHL minutes. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So that is going to be it for this one. If you guys are enjoying this series so far, again, make sure to go down below, drop a like, subscribe, hit notifications, show your support in the comment section as well. And that is going to be it for me. This is Etanio signing out, and until next time.